the full details of my single-handed cruise from Charleston, South Carolina, to New Orleans, Louisiana, are in ten episodes, episode one linked below. This video is to list the cost incurred in fuel, marinas and maintenance. It does not include food, drink and tourist jobs, as those costs will vary with individual lifestyles. It also includes buying the 1983 Albin 27-foot cruiser Free State on an eBay auction from my computer in the UK and selling on Craigslist in New Orleans 1,800 miles later. My winning bid for Free State was $6,600 paid by bank draft plus a consigner fee of $150 paid by PayPal. The marina also charged $165 for the balance of the month's slip rent. Basic boat insurance from Progressive was $180 and South Carolina registration $300. An inflatable tender and outboard on Craigslist and the seller kindly dropped it off on board before I left the UK. Stayed in a hotel for two weeks while we enjoyed the lovely area, shopped and tackled a few boat jobs. I bought tools from Harbour Freight to tackle those jobs. As usual, the boat needs cleaning. The dollar store lavatory bowl cleaner works wonders on fiberglass, and denatured alcohol for the stove removes stubborn marks. Leaking port lights and deck lights were sorted by adjusting hinges and gaskets. Some rub rail needed replacing. The 33-year-old 61 horsepower Lehman diesel only had 823 hours on it, so just about run in. The oil heat exchanger needed work and the flexible oil lines replaced. Rigged a push bike brake cable as an engine pull stop and fitted a raw water strainer. Changed the oil and fitted a new raw water impeller. Later I had to replace the rotted fuel lines, but apart from that the Lehman ran faultlessly for over 300 hours. The GPS map worked perfectly, but was too old to get new charts. A typical contract by manufacturers to make you buy new kit. Two more anchors and a push bike from Craigslist, a fridge and a sewing machine to repair bunk cushions and run up cockpit screens made from Walmart shower curtains. Finally, I had a hauled out to check a rudder and prop bearings, fit a new anode, check her hull and patch the bottom paint and clean, wax and polish her top sides. Under a month after arrival, I set off down river and bought 55 gallons of diesel at Ripley Light Marina and then headed south. Day sailing all the way, we anchored in the South Edisto River the first night, then anchored near Savannah, Brunswick and Jacksonville the next three nights before popping into Beach Marine, Jacksonville Beach for 42 gallons of diesel. Engine hours from Charleston, 42 and a half hours, so a nice easy calculation of a gallon per hour cruising at about seven miles per hour. Anchored in St. Augustine and Smyrna Beach, then stayed in Titusville Marina for the night and replaced the house battery as the old ones weren't holding a charge. After anchoring by the Webasso Bridge, I dropped the hook near Port St. Lucie for a couple of days while I shopped and did a few chores. Took on fuel at Stewart, then anchored just before Lake Okeechobee. A night at anchor outside Clewiston on the edge of the lake, then through the locks and down the Caloosahatchee River to tie up at the Freetown dock at La Belle for three nights. I thought I would take a diversion south to see Naples, so anchored behind Fort Myers Beach in Hurricane Bay on the way. I was not impressed with Naples, so headed north to anchor in Charlotte Harbour. Picked up fuel in Gasparilla Marina, then anchored in Venice before staying at the Freedown dock at Bridenton, south of Tampa Bay lovely beaches. Next day we left the shelter of the ICW and anchored off Tarpon Springs in the Gulf. The weather made for lumpy progress north up the shallow waters of the Gulf of Mexico.
anchoring at Cedar Keys and Steinhatchie before crossing to Carabelle. After a couple of days at anchor, I called into Sea Quarters Marina for shopping and 45 gallons of diesel and waited for the weather to moderate. I spent the time advertising Free State for sale on eBay and Craigslist for $18,000. Three more nights at anchor short of Panama City, Destin and Mobile Bay brought us to Biloxi where we tied up in Point Cadet Marina for a couple of days. After Bloxy, I anchored in Bienvenue Bayou, with high-rise buildings of my destination on the skyline, then next morning into Seabrook Marina, New Orleans. As my US visa was running out, and with no buyers for Free State, I decided to look at yards on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain to lay her up. Nice yards and lovely people, but in the end decided to pay extra and lay her up at Seabrook, behind the multi-billion dollar sea defences built after Hurricane Katrina. I would, after all, be thousands of miles away from looking after her. Ten months later I was back and decided to head back to Florida, so I flew into Orlando and took a Greyhound bus to New Orleans to see the countryside and meet people most interesting. After a few maintenance jobs, I was waiting a few days for the weather to moderate before setting off. Out of the blue, a buyer came along and after some good-natured haggling, settled on a price of $15,000. Tough that I had just spent $2,700 storage and several hundred dollars commissioning her ready for the season but it is a good feeling knowing that she will give her new owner a lot of pleasure. I broke even on the deal, so long as I didn't include several hundred hours labour, flights, car hire, etc., etc., but another great adventure in the States. Thank you, America.